how sickly seem all growing things. Dialectical thought opposes reification in the further sense that it refuses to affirm individual things in their isolation and separateness. It designates isolation as precisely a product of the universal. Thus it acts as a corrective both to manic fixity and to the unresisting and empty drift of the paranoid mind, which pays for its absolute judgments by loss of the experience of the matter judged. But the dialectic is not for this reason what it became in the English Hegelian school, and still more completely in Dewey's strenuous pragmatism. A sense of proportion, a way of putting things in their correct perspective, plain but obdurate common sense. If Hegel seemed himself, in his conversation with Goeth, to come close to such a view when he defended his philosophy against Goeth's Platonism on the grounds that it was basically no more than the spirit of opposition innate in each human being, regulated and methodically developed, a gift which proves its worth in distinguishing truth from falsehood, the veiled meaning of his formulation mischievously includes in the praise of what is innate in each human being a denunciation of common sense, since man's innermost characteristic is defined as precisely a refusal to be guided by common sense, indeed as opposition to it. Common sense, the correct assessment of situations, the worldly eye schooled by the market, shares with the dialectic a freedom from dogma, narrow-mindedness, and prejudice. Its sobriety undeniably constitutes a moment of critical thinking, but its lack of passionate commitment makes it all the same the sworn enemy of such thinking, for opinion in its generality accepted directly as that of so, uh, that of society as it is necessarily has agreement as its concrete content. It is no coincidence that in the 19th century it was stale dogmatism, given a bad conscience by the Enlightenment, that appealed to common sense, so that an arch-positivist like Mill had to inveigh against the latter. The sense of proportion entails a total obligation to think in terms of the established measures and values. One need only have once heard a die-hard representative of a ruling clique say, that is, of no consequence, or note at what times the bourgeois talk of exaggeration, hysteria, folly, to know that the appeal to reason invariably occurs most promptly in apologies for unreason. Hegel stressed the healthy spirit of contradiction with the obstinacy obstinacy of the peasant who has learned over the centuries to endure the hunts and ground rent of mighty feudal lords. It is the concern of dialectics to cock a snook at the sound views held by later powers that be on the immutability of the course of the world and to decipher in their, prop in their proportions the faithful and reduced mirror image of inordinately enlarged disproportions. Dialectical reason is, when set against the dominant mode of reason, unreason. Only in encompassing and cancelling this mode does it become itself reasonable. What is not bigoted and Talmudic to insist, in the midst of the exchange economy, on the difference between the labor time expended by the worker and that needed for reproduction of his life? Did not Nietzsche put the cart before all the horses on which he rode his charges? Did not Karl Krauss, Kafka, even Proust, prejudice and falsify the image of the world in order to shake off falsehood and prejudice. The dialectic cannot stop short before the concepts of health and sickness, nor indeed before their siblings reason and unreason. Once it has recognized the ruling universal order and its proportions as sick and marked in the most literal sense with paranoia, with pathic projection, then it can see as healing cells only what appears by the standards of that order as itself sick, eccentric, paranoia, indeed mad, and it is true today as in the Middle Ages that only fools tell their masters the truth. The dialectician's duty is thus to help this fool's truth to attain its own reasons, without which it will certainly succumb to the abyss of the sickness implacably dictated by the healthy common sense of the rest.